Why you don't need to dribble to size up the defense. I'm Tony. Welcome back to Street Ball Strategy. But we need the two of them to learn from each other's the only way we move in. Yeah. Ain't gonna let them ruin us. A nation divided, don't want us united. Yeah. Hey, we need some enlightenment, we need to relight it. They, they know. Today I want to talk about a problem that I see happening commonly, not just uh, out on the park on a regular basis, but also in the NBA all too often. And that is the idea that when you have the ball in your hand, especially if you're around the perimeter, you need to start dribbling immediately so that you can size up your defender and the rest of the defense. What I'm talking about is as soon as a player, usually around the perimeter, catches the ball, it seems to be their instinct to immediately start dribbling. And I understand the reasoning and the, the intention for doing so, which is number one, to make yourself a, an immediate uh, threat to the defense and number two so that you can start to uh, evaluate and size up the defense to understand what they're trying to do to stop you now while i don't think this is inherently bad and it should stop altogether i do see a very major flaw that's taking place with doing this on a regular basis so let's talk about why i think it's so bad and what you can do to overcome it there are a couple reasons i'm citing as to why i think this is a problem Number one, if you catch the ball around the perimeter and you immediately start dribbling as soon as you have possession of the ball, that takes away one of the possibilities that holding the ball and staying in a triple threat position would allow you to have. Obviously, when you're in the triple threat, you can either pass, shoot, or dribble. But if you start immediately dribbling, now all you can do is either shoot or pass. And you can make the argument that when you're dribbling, you're more of a threat than if you were just to be standing still here. And while that is true, my problem comes from overdoing it. You know, when you catch the ball, if your immediate go-to move is just to start dribbling, and that's what you do 90 plus percent of the time, the problem is that starts to make you uh, predictable. Because when you're standing in the triple threat, you are not predictable. I mean, you can be a little bit predictable, if you have you know a, a good knowledgeable experienced defender on you who can read your body language when you're just standing here there are defenders that have that ability and that skill but for the most part if you're just standing in the triple threat there's really no indication of what you're wanting to do what you're trying to do what your plan what your strategy may or may not be also when you start dribbling immediately every time you're signaling not just to your defender but to the rest of the defense that you are intending to attack you're intending to be a one-man ball hogging attack whether that attack be to shoot a jumper or to get to the basket you've indicated that your teammates have become much less important to be defended than they were before you received the pass, before you had the ball in your possession. The rest of your teammates were much more dangerous as possible threats before you had the ball in your hand, but now because you have the ball in your hand and because you're dribbling, intending to be a one-man team, a one-man threat, now your teammates are much less dangerous as possible scoring threats, which can be good if you're setting up those players to throw an assist to them by, by trying to uh, bring the other defenders to you for a double team. But usually, especially out here at the park, that's not that player's intended purpose. Their purpose usually is they intend to score the ball and they're gonna do it by first setting up whatever move they're gonna make by dribbling. So not only does immediately dribbling when you catch the ball, not only does that immediately take away the element of surprise coming out of a triple threat position, but now you've just signaled to the defense that you intend to be the scoring threat that's going to try to immediately score and become the, uh, the, the target of their defensive strategy. My other problem with immediately dribbling the ball when you catch it around the perimeter is players will say they're doing it so that they can survey the defense to evaluate it to see what the defense is trying to do. So when they catch the ball, they immediately start dribbling so that they can get the defense's attention so that they can then understand 
what the defense is trying to strategize against them, which then will allow them to find holes in the defense, which then will allow them to score. To that I say, while I don't completely disagree with that, if you only are surveying and try to understand the defense only when you have the ball in your hand, you are severely lacking as an offensive player. One of the best skill sets you can have, especially as an offensive player, is being able to understand, be aware of the defense, regardless or not, if you have the ball in your hands. The better you can see the defense, the more aware you are, the better you can understand the formation of the defense and thus where the holes in the defense are, even without the ball in your hand, the more of an offensive threat you're going to be even if you're off the ball. And you could throw out the scenario of what if it's a dead ball situation, meaning uh, the defense isn't set yet because it's a dead ball situation. Now, the ball has to be inbounded, right? And the ball gets inbounded to you and now the defense is set. So there wasn't a defense for you to evaluate and to survey before the ball was inbounded to you because it was a dead ball. Again, in that situation, remember, if you're on offense, even in a dead ball situation, you should be continually trying to manipulate your defender and the rest of the defense. What I mean is just because the ball's out of bounds and now it's a dead ball and the ball has to be inbounded before it's back in play again, that doesn't mean that suddenly defense doesn't exist. It just means that it doesn't, it's not in play, you know, in that moment. You can still manipulate the defense. You can still manipulate the other team even though the ball's not even in play yet. In those dead ball situations, the person that you're responsible for guarding, do you just stand there and let them walk to the other side of the court and you don't follow them? Of course you do. Even in dead ball situations, you still follow the person, the player that you're supposed to be defending even though the ball isn't in play. Technically, you're still on defense. Technically, you're still playing defense. And the offense, even though the ball isn't in play yet, should be moving around the court, uh, setting up a formation where, you know, spreading the floor so that when the ball is inbounded, now they can employ whatever strategy that they're trying to achieve. Hopefully they do have some kind of strategy that they're trying to achieve in a game, even when the ball is dead and they're waiting for it to be inbounded, you should still have an idea of what you're going to try to do once the ball is inbounded. You should have a plan, a strategy for that. And while you're waiting for the ball to get back in play, you should be setting up whatever formation you need to have in order for that strategy to take place. And you can't do that with, without constantly surveying the defense even though the ball isn't currently in play. So whether you're on the ball, whether you're off the ball, or even in dead ball situations, you should be continually surveying and understanding, evaluating and plotting, strategizing against the defense. So now that we talked about what my problems are with immediately catching and dribbling the ball around the perimeter, let's talk about alternatives that you can do that may be more effective when it comes to being out here at the park and getting the ball around the perimeter instead of immediately dribbling every time. Basically, my alternate strategy to catching the ball and immediately start dribbling so that you can be a threat or start evaluating the defense is basically just to not be predictable. Do whatever you need to do, whatever you should do to not make your game, your move, be predictable. The defense knows that as soon as you catch the ball, every time you catch the ball, you immediately start dribbling. Now you've made that small portion of your game predictable. When that happens, the defense knows that they need to focus on you. They need to take you as a threat. As soon as you catch the ball, they know that you're going to start dribbling, which makes you a threat, which means their attention is now on you, which is gonna make it harder for you to score. So instead of dribbling every time, sometimes you hit the triple threat, you hold it. Sometimes you catch the ball and you immediately pass to someone else. Whatever you need to do to not let your game become predictable is what you should do instead of immediately catching the ball and immediately start dribbling. Observe the other players out here. When you're waiting to get in a game and you got next or whatever, don't just watch the game and enjoy it and be a fan. Evaluate what's going on. Pay attention. Watch how, not just out here at the park, but so many times in the NBA, as soon as players catch the ball around the perimeter, they immediately have to. They need to. It's, it's just 
you know, part of their habits to immediately start dribbling the ball even though they don't even have a plan yet. They don't have a strategy. They don't have a reason to start dribbling. They just start dribbling because that's what basketball players do, right? As soon as you catch the ball in your hand, you either have to shoot immediately or you start dribbling immediately. That's a terrible mindset to have because it's severely limiting. There's nothing that you have to do when you catch the ball. The only thing that you have to do is if you intend on moving, you have to dribble the ball. That's the only have to that exists. But if in your mind you've programmed yourself that if I have the ball in my hand, I have to dribble or I have to shoot, you are limiting yourself as an offensive player. So consciously tell yourself, remind yourself to switch it up. Sometimes you dribble, sometimes you pass, sometimes you shoot, but you don't allow the defense to know to predict what you're going to do. There can be exceptions for that, of course, when you're trying to appear to be predictable to set the defense up for you doing something else in the future. But outside of that, if it's just your habit to immediately shoot or immediately dribble just because you have the ball in your hand, you're gonna make yourself predictable, which is going to bring more defensive pressure onto you as a player, which is going to make you less effective. So had that be part of your strategy to not be predictable by switching up what you do every time you catch the ball. So many players, especially young, inexperienced players, have the limited mindset and perspective that the defense only exists when you have the ball in your hand. That defense only matters when you are the ball handler. That couldn't be further from the truth. You can manipulate the defense whether or not you have the ball in your hand. You can manipulate the defense whether or not the ball is even in play. That goes for surveying, understanding, being aware of the defense as well. You should continually be trying to set up holes and uh, weaknesses in the defense whether or not you have the ball in your hand whether or not the ball is even in play as an offensive player having the ball in your hand or not the ball being in play or not it is continuously your job to be manipulating the defense always you can do that by immediately catching the ball and starting to dribble but you don't have to and the more you do that the more often you do the more predictable you make yourself so expand your mindset, expand your perspective, and don't allow yourself to fall into a mold where the defense can now think of you as predictable and set up a strategy to shut you down. Ideally, you would want to be a scoring threat yourself as much as you are a passing and assisting threat to your teammates so that they can score. But either way, you don't want it to be predictable that you're going to pass and or you're going to dribble the ball and try to attack yourself. The more balanced of a player you are, the more well-rounded your game is, the more of a threat you're going to be on offense. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, if you think it's going to help you become a better, well-rounded offensive player, less predictable, if you think it's gonna help you, you break you out of those habits of doing certain things on offense just because you think that you have to, you have to, you have to fit into that mold that you have in your mind, if you think it's gonna help you break out of that mold and expand your offense, then please subscribe to the channel. That's what we do here. We talk strategy, strategizing how to make yourself the best overall basketball player you can be. And we do that by talking about the small stuff. We don't do workouts. We don't do drills on this channel. That's not what I focus on. I don't focus on the big overarching stuff that all of the other basketball channels on YouTube focus on. I focus on the small overlooked stuff. And then we put all that small little stuff together over time until it expands your game. And that's the kind of stuff that is going to allow yourself to separate yourself and elevate yourself from every other player out here on the court who only pays attention to that big overarching stuff of how to shoot threes and what drills and workouts you need to do to be the next NBA superstar. If you want to separate yourself from them, elevate yourself from them, this is the channel for you. We talk about the stuff that they don't, we put in the work that they don't, and because of that, we have a game that sets us apart from everyone else. And while you're subscribing to the channel, don't forget to hit that thanks button down below. 
when you hit that thanks button it directly supports the channel and it also helps to uh, highlight whatever comments you put below so you can make yourself stand out in the comments and you directly support the channel when you do that I genuinely appreciate it as always like share comment hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever any videos go live on this channel and until then I'll see you guys next week if we get ignited and we get excited they know that we can move a mountain with the passion inside us yeah